Ah, oh, this comp sucks. Oh my gosh. If you Omega Hyrule, it's actually good though. Hey guys, it's Soju here. The TFT Gizmos and Gadgets Championship is just around the corner. In this event, 32 of the world's top players will be competing to be crowned the best. So I'm here to give you my tier list on some of the strong builds that you might see throughout the event. With the introduction of 12.6 and 12.7, reroll comps just got nerfed, so there's more value in rolling on 7 and especially 8. AD comps throughout set 6.5 have been more flexible since there's just more AD outs. So let's take a look at some of the strong team comps that might be contested throughout the tournament. Okay, so the first comp that we'll be looking at is Strikers. It's going to be a Sivir and Aurelia duo carry with Sivir as your primary carry. The only item that Sivir really needs is going to be Last Whisperer because your entire team has a lot of AD and Sivir's um, kit has the ability to shred the entire team's armor. Aurelia is going to be holding your extra offensive items and Vi is just going to be holding all your tank items. You can't go 6 Striker unless you have Striker Heart or Striker Emblem, but it's going to be a lot stronger if you can get 6. But if you can't get 6 Striker, it's not the biggest deal because you can just play Force Crap. Um, Blitz Braum Frontline can be an easy replacement for some of the Bruisers. You get to drop a Striker. You don't have to play Vi and you can play Blitz and Braum. Um, Jinx is also going to be a really good unit since you don't have to play Vi. So in this variation, instead of Vi holding the frontline items, it would probably be Braum instead. And instead of Aurelia holding the items, it could be Jinx. But the reason this comp is really strong is because you can make a really strong board without having any legendary units. Especially if you can get Striker Heart or Striker Emblem, she's really strong. And also she doesn't really need a legendary to do well. I think Sivir is just super flexible. The only item she really does need is Last Whisperer. And another bow item is nice. The next build we're going to be looking at is Renata Bruisers. So in this comp, it's going to be Renata Bruisers. Your frontline is just going to be Bruisers. You can't really fit a 6 Bruiser unless you're level 9, but sometimes you can go 6 Bruiser and, and still play the Alawi if you don't have access to the Silco or Victor. But I think this comp is really strong, but it's a little bit less flexible. Uh, Renata BIS is just going to be blue buff Gunblade Morello. Most of your frontline items are going to be on Vi. It's just whatever uh, frontline items that you have left. But the strongest opener for this comp is going to be Mercenary because you really do spike on 9. Having the 6 Bruisers with the Silco and Victor, especially with Victor um, being your duo carry later as you get items on Carousel, is going to be really strong. And then Silco giving your Bruisers a lot of effective HP just makes their whole team die to the Renata with Morello. And then the Gunblade can heal your Bruisers quite a bit. For this comp, the level 9 board is going to be a lot stronger than the level 8 board. So throughout the tournament, expect this comp to win more games, but not top four as many. Renata's weakness is she needs blue buff Morello. And some, like you, you also want Gunblade. Sometimes you can go Shoujin if you can skip level eight and have Silco give Renata the Instacast, but the Instacast with blue buff is super important. And also she just spikes really hard on nine. That's the only thing holding her back. She does a lot of damage just by herself. She just needs frontline. I think Renata is easily an S. If you can make it to level nine, I think it's easily an S plus as well. Okay, so the next comp that we're going to take a look at is going to be Kha'Zix. This comp is super flexible. Kha'Zix can use a lot of items. Um, for example, Edge of Night, IE, BT, GS, um, Last Whisper of Rudance. It's just a bunch of items that he can use. I think his best in slot is one healing, one damage, and Edge of Night is probably his best item. But basically, it's going to be Frozen Heart Echo to nullify their backline DPS, Kha'Zix as your main damage dealer, and then your frontline can be Blitz and Braum, but it could also be Rek'Sai Vi. Rek'Sai is really nice because you can play Mutant. And then the other parts of the comp are just going to be utility. For example, Jin Oriana here gives Clockwork a little bit of CC. Sometimes you can splash in Mutant because Kai'Sa is the best Morello holder. Throughout the tournament, since this comp is so flexible, a lot of the times you can hit a variation of this board on 8 and easily funnel your gold into going 9 and maybe pivoting into Jinx or Jace. I think Kha'Zix is especially strong because he can hold any any items. And also Kha'Zix gives you a really easy transition into Jinx and Jace. Kha'Zix is slightly worse than Sivir, but I wouldn't put Kha'Zix in the same tier as Renata. We'll be looking at Draven as your primary carry. Draven needs slightly more than the other comps to do well. Going back to find the Syndra 2, Zyra 2, and Camille 2 is a little bit more difficult because most of the times these units are not going to be found on your early mid game boards. And not only that, you also have to find Debonair chosen Draven. Non VIP Draven is a lot worse 
than VIP Draven. The best in slot for Draven is going to be GS IE Hodge, but there are some flexible variants. Most of the time you need GS, you don't really need the IE. Sometimes you don't need the healing, especially if you can get one in Augment, but it's just going to be GS. Knives Edge does really well with Draven. And if you do have Knives Edge, Runan's frontline uh, Draven, even QSS is okay but this is gonna be your default board. Players who roll down and do hit the VIP Draven can pivot into this comp. It's slightly less flexible, but it can still do well. Because this comp requires so many conditions to be met, it's not nearly as flexible. And players in the tournament who lean Draven as their main comp, I wouldn't expect them to make it to day two. Draven's actually not bad. He can keep up with DPS with some of the other carries. He just needs more to get online. He's less flexible. The items he uses are way less flexible than say something like Sivir that only needs Last Whisperer or Caustic that really needs nothing. For Draven Flex, I think it's no surprise that Draven Flex is going to be probably at the bottom of the list at B tier. Moving on to the next comp, sharing the same front line, we're just going to be changing the carry. It's going to be Ari. Ari is actually really strong. I think the problem with Ari is she's less flexible as some of the AD carries. Her best items is going to be blue buff Gunblade. Um, the Gunblade really does heal uh, your team a lot because the Syndicates have base armor and MR. You can easily flex in and out of three and five Syndicate, just depending on what you hit. Sometimes you don't even have to play the Orianna Jin, but sometimes you want to just play Silco, Zyra, Braum, Blitz, Ari, and just play three Syndicate and be able to flex better units. So throughout the tournament, you can expect this comp to do pretty well. It's just a little bit inconsistent, so you can see people going like seven and eight and then can't find the Ari to round out their comp. So for this build, if players have the blue buff JG plus one on Ari, you can expect them to play Ari and easily get a top four and maybe even win if they can go Victor Silco duo carry. Ari is actually like really strong. It's just Ari is the same problem with Renata. It's just slightly worse. The Blitz Braum is going to be really contested, but Ari with blue buff Gunblade is, is super strong still. Sometimes if you have healing or like maybe Celestial, you don't actually need the Gunblade and you can go full damage Ari and Ari actually has really high DPS output, but Ari is just Renata, but worse. I think the AP units are just slightly less flexible. Ari is just a little bit behind Renata. I'm gonna go ahead and put Ari Flex as an A tier. It's slightly behind Renata, but it's definitely better than Draven. Our primary carry here is going to be Jin. In this comp, there's going to be two open slots. The Morgana and Senna are interchangeable. Sometimes you hit maybe a free Kha'Zix 2 and the Kha'Zix 2 can pair with your Echo. Or if the Social A Hex is one of the backline hexes and Jin can use it, sometimes you want to just play the Seraphine. Maybe you want to play the Senna. Uh, you can even splash in a Nar, you can go Galio over Braum. But just keep in mind, you don't want your Jin to get pulled. So if it is the corner hex, you can easily build QSS and just sack one of the damage items. I think best in slot Jin is going to be uh, DV, Last Wizard plus one, GS is good, IE is good. Even BT sometimes is okay if there's like a lot of assassins and stuff. Players who hit a free Jin 2 on their roll down will most likely default to this board. It's hard to win with this board though, because you're never going to be able to pivot your Jin items onto Jinx or Jace because a lot of the times you want to keep the Jin. I think I'll put Jin at probably an A tier. It's slightly better than Ari, but it's not it's not on tier with Renata, I think. Let's take a look at Darkstar with Malzahar as your primary carry. In this comp, how Darkstar or Voracious Appetite works, when one of your units die, it gives your mutants 30 AD and AP at five mutants. And it works off of Phony Frontline, which is a tier one augment. And it also works off of ZZ Rot. So if people have Pandora's or Phony Frontline, you can expect them to hard force Darkstar for a guaranteed free top two. Your early game is really weak, but as you go later and later into the game, it gets stronger and stronger as you can play more units. This comp spikes especially hard when you have a mutant spat because you can mutant spat someone and not play Cho'Gath. Malzahar with Gunblade is really strong. JG with the high AP from the mutant is going to be good. And then one mana item. Shoujin is slightly better than blue buff, but blue buff is acceptable. Um, Morello Kaisa is always good. And then Kaisa can easily be a duo carry. Kha'Zix can easily be a duo carry as well. If a player opens with Phony Frontline or Pandora's, you can expect them to just hard force this comp for almost a guaranteed top four. There's a lot of mutants and a lot of the mutants are actually pretty solid, but I think the one most worth talking about is going to be uh, Voracious Appetite or Darkstar, especially when the players get Phony Frontline or Pandora's item box to just make infinite ZZ Rot. Now these are my rankings, so take it with a grain of salt. Different regions have different metas. And honestly, at the end of the day, TFT is a flexible game and any of these comps can win.
And that's it for my tier list of builds that you might see at the TFT Gizmos and Gadgets Championship. Let me know what you think. The meta right now is super flexible and I know it'll be an exciting tournament. So don't miss out. Be sure to tune in on April 29th to watch all the action unfold.